Then he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's good news, brothers and sisters. Praise the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, <clears throat> and peace in the name of Jesus to all of our television viewing audience. Today's lesson is going to be simply entitled, The Road to Salvation is Paved by Strife and Contention. You'll hear another saying that people often use is that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. But we're not concentrating on trying to get to hell. We're trying to show everybody what we need to do in order to get into God's kingdom. But one of the things that I noticed that the preachers don't do is let you know that you have got to contend to get into God's kingdom. The preachers today have got people thinking they're just going to sashay up into the Lord's kingdom <clears throat> with a free pass. And that's simply not the case, brothers and sisters. That's why this lesson is entitled, The Road to Salvation is Paved by Strife and Contention. And if you don't know that, when you get on the path to really starting to try, uh, try and follow God's word, you're going to get caught up. You, you're going to get beat down and not even know why. But see, when you read the word of God, he lets us know that. Just the opposite to what the preachers tell you, because most of the time, most preachers will tell you all you got to do is call on the name of the Lord and ye shall be saved. And the Bible does say that in Romans, the 10th chapter, but it doesn't end like that, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> They'll read that one little scripture to you, Call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Then they'll, they'll direct you down that, that path with rose-colored glasses on as if that's all that's necessary. But what Paul was doing in that particular scripture, if you read the whole thing through, Paul did say that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, but he also demanded that you qualify that. He said, how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And then how can they hear except that they, they, they have got a preacher? And how can he preach except that he be sent? So it's got to be qualified. It's not that cut and dried, brothers and sisters. And not only is it not that cut and dried, we're going to find out in the course of this lesson that the, that the road to salvation indeed is paved with strife and contention. So we're going to start today's lesson off in Matthew, the seventh chapter, and we're going to start reading Matthew in the words of Jesus at verse number 21. Matthew 7 and verse number 21. Okay, brother, go ahead. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, uh -huh. but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And so if we believe anybody, brothers and sisters, we need to take God's word. These are written in red lettering, so we know these are the words of Jesus. And so it's not as cut and dried as just call on the name of the Lord, according to what we just read. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. So we got some people doing a lot of calling right now, calling on the name of Jesus, just like your preacher done told you. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but what? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. There we go. We call it again. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, what? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Brothers and sisters, we ain't talking about dope dealers or prostitutes. We're talking about people that go to church on a regular basis. These are the people that do these things. So you better be aware of that, brothers and sisters, That's right. because it ain't as cut and dried as your preacher that made you believe. Like Jesus always said, let no man deceive you, whether it's your preacher or your neighbor. Whoever it is, let no man deceive you. You need to know these things for your own benefit. There you go. He says, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Go ahead. And in thy name have 
cast out devils. Uh -huh. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Calling, calling, calling on the name of Jesus. And what is Jesus going to say to him? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. That's going to be a sad occasion for some, a whole lot of people, brothers and sisters, who think all they need to do is call on the name of Jesus. But now, let's get back and, uh, uh, and pick it up at verse number 13 and start reading. Enter ye at the straight gate, uh -huh. for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. You hear what the Lord said? Enter ye in at the straight gate. And the straight gate, brothers and sisters, is following God's word uncut, unedited, unaltered. That's what he means. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And what? And many there be which go in there at. And many there be which go in there at. And we're talking about basically all of those uh, doctrines that teach you contrary to the doctrine of the Lord that tell you that the first day of the week is all right for you to have as a Sabbath. You can't find it nowhere in the word, in the word of God, brothers and sisters. The seventh day is a Sabbath only. That's right. God made that clear that that's what sanctifies you. But you won't sanctify yourself just like it says in Isaiah, the 66th chapter, where you got destruction coming behind that, brothers and sisters, because you can't save you. Only thing that can save you is the word of God. And when you come and you walk in the word of God, you're going to run into strife and contention. We're going to see that. Go ahead. 14. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. There's only a few that's going to find the right way. Go ahead. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are raving in wool. Because these false prophets is out here in wholesale. The Lord said in the last days there'll be many false prophets. And so they're out here wholesale and they're leading most people onto the wrong path. Let's go right now to Luke, the 13th chapter. Luke, the 13th chapter. And we're going to basically read almost verbatim because the Lord says, wherever you can find two or three witnesses that agree in my name, there I am also in the midst of them. So that's why we read the Bible the way we do, brothers and sisters, here a little and there a little. Old and New Testament, all of it's good to go. Luke, the 13th chapter, and pick it up at verse number 23. Luke 13, and pick it up at verse number 23. Okay, go ahead. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? You know what? And most of us today should be asking that same question. Lord, are there few that can be saved? Because it ain't as cut and dried as your preacher that made you think. Are there few that can be saved? And what did he say? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Okay, now he said strive to enter in. Now, we've got a dictionary description of what it means to strive in case some of you all got something written otherwise or contrarywise in your concordance. So we're going to read the description of what it is to strive. Okay, this is from the Reader's Oxford um, Dictionary. Strive, conflict, struggle between opposing opposing persons or things uh-huh discord disharmony disagreement disagreement difference. disharmony you mean all of this is what you need to go through to get into the kingdom go ahead difference comfort rivalry competition and contention contention competition that's exactly why the lesson is entitled the way it is appropriately brothers and sisters because this is what the lord said he said the same thing he said in Matthew, but you have to go from the different scriptures. You'll pick up a little bit more understanding as you go from scripture to scripture. So in this particular instance, back to the red written lettering, he says strive to enter in. So that means you're going through some contention. That means you're competing to get in. That means right. you're struggling to get in, not just calling on the name of the Lord. We're a long way from just you just call on the name of the Lord and it's going to be okay. So don't let nobody deceive you like the Lord said. Watch out for deception. Read that again. Start over with that one. 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh-huh. When once the master of the house is raising up and have shut and have shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. We got people calling on him again. Lord, 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 Lord. Open unto us and what? And he shall say and he shall answer and say unto you, I know ye not whence ye are. Uh-huh. Then shall you begin to say, 